The Adventures of Supercar Zombie Girl by Richard L. Elsager. Copyright 2023. It wasn't any one particular thing that got me to this point. Much like an archer that releases an arrow, there are multiple factors that affect the course of an arrow. Factors like crosswinds, velocity and trajectory, not to mention bad aim, that can make the arrow miss its mark, or hit its mark depending on who's aiming. I never expected my life to be on the receiving end of that arrow, never imagined it to turn out like this, but here I am. My name is Veronica. Veronica Lloyd, I think. Pretty sure it's Veronica, not so sure about the Lloyd part, but give me time, it'll come to me. I did have a life before the incident that changed me forever. To cut to the chase here, I got bitten. Twice, actually. And no, I don't mean something as innocuous as an insect or a spider. Things far worse were at play that night. You might wonder if once bitten really makes you twice shy. Well, I can tell you that twice bitten makes you four times more angry, four times more aggressive and pissed off. But it's not always like that, of course. I'm still a girly girl with my softer moments in the cemeteries. What happened to me happened for a reason, as they say. But whatever reason that might be, I am still waiting on an answer. The reality is that I can never go back. Yet I need to ask myself, even if I could return to my former life, in all actuality, would I? It seems apparent to me that I have adapted well to what I've become. I have joined the ranks of the undead. I'm a zombie girl, to put it quite bluntly, but with a unique twist, you see. I'm a new type of zombie creature, formed from a confluence of the darkest shadowy elements of horror ever imagined in the minds of fiction writers. Things that should never exist emerge to prove that the rumors... The legends were more than harsh specters of fantasy horror. They were real. The popular belief is that zombies can't think or feel like regular people. But I am more than zombie. I am also vampire. I am living proof of it, and I use the word living, quote-unquote, in the loosest sense of the word. Let me relieve you of any doubt. I very much exist, a prime example of the undead. I can't exactly feel my heartbeat, but don't hold that against me. Where was I? I have brain fog for obvious reasons. Oh yes, I am living proof that zombies do exist, and so do vampires. I have a taste for blood, sometimes flesh, sometimes both. I will say this. I am a stellar example that not all zombies are bad, neither are vampires. I have to qualify that because it depends on the situation in which you find me, but that is another story for another time. If you cross me, or I happen to be really hungry or thirsty, I will send you straight to hell with no layovers along the way. You've been warned. I'm busy at the moment. Just need to locate where they keep the keys. I scan the interior with razor-sharp vision, still not finding what I'm looking for. Oh, there's the box over there, hiding in plain view. Silly zombie, sometimes vampire. How could I have missed it? I walk over to the box and wrench on the cabinet door with my gouging fingers and the hinges tear away in compliance to my demand. I let the cabinet door slam to the floor. Did I mention that I'm strong, too? Much stronger than the flimsy girly I was in a past life. Several sets of keys drop out from the box and jingle on the floor like Santa Claus. I pause to count each one of them. I now suffer from arrhythmomania, the uncontrollable compulsion to count things. It's a vampire thing, what can I say? My eyes are fast to identify the key I need, and my fetid hand picks it up by instinct. Being the thief that I am, I waste not a moment's time clicking on the key fob to unlock the prize. Courtesy lights flash inside the showroom, revealing the centerpiece of my desire. I waltz over to the Ferrari as gracefully as any zombie vampire could manage. The door to the Ferrari cooperates and opens smoothly on its hinges, rising to accommodate one zombie girl. If I haven't mentioned it before, you know, that brain fog thing... I'm a car thief with a passion for supercars. I have vague memories of such thievery in a past life, but the images are hazy now. What a beautiful Ferrari. Looks like this will be my chariot for the night. I like the color red. It reminds me of the spurting blood that gushes from the veins of my victims. When I'm not slurping blood, I have a distinct taste for flesh and brains to fuel my passion. Auto thievery works up an appetite, you know. 
even more so for supercars due to all those built-in security protections. Flesh, blood, and supercars, they go together, I say. Hey, a zombie girl has to eat, and a vampire girl has to drink. The rest is pure joy behind the wheel, driving at high velocity. The dead travel fast, right? But am I really dead? Can't figure that one out and don't have the time to think about it now. I ease into the supple leather driver's seat and it fits my somewhat unfresh body quite well. I know that I stink of the grave. I'll get some deodorant later. I elbow the center console and it pops open. Wouldn't you know it, an owner's manual is stuffed deep within the confines. And guess what? I'm the new owner. It's the witching hour, my favorite time of night if I may say. And I bet the dealer never suspected that a simple girl like me might break into his dealership to acquire one of his prized cars, never mind a zombified vampire girl. Besides, if he ever tried to stop me, I'd bite him. Hell, I might even eat him. Tonight the showroom is clear of the daytime clutter of the living. As time passes, I must say that I find the living to be a tedious bore, and I much rather prefer my life as a car thief within the zombie vampire realm in which I must live. I prepared well for tonight's main event, having shorted out the security system, which of course means that the closed circuit cameras are conveniently off for the moment. I exit the Ferrari to make way for our majestic passage to the open road. The glass doors to the showroom slide easily on smooth ball bearings, with a bit of unnatural effort on my part. The fresh outdoor air greets my nose with a dankness that contradicts the stale needs of my body and causes me to gag. It's okay. I'll be all right. It's just that fresh air is kind of gross, but I tolerate it. Well, let's get this started. I climb back in, pull down on the butterfly door, insert the key with a twist, and push the start button. The potent, longitudinally mounted V12 engine belches to life. I know my cars. I scan the gauges. There isn't a lot of gas in this one, but it's a hybrid Ferrari, and I'll fill up the tank once I put some distance between me and this dealership. Ah, the throb of a V12 engine vibrating behind me, as melodic to a zombie vampire now as it was in my former life. Never do I get tired of Mr. Enzo Ferrari's cars. I engage drive on the seven-speed dual-clutch automatic and ease my Ferrari supercar out into the night. She slips gracefully between two massive panes of glass, a red flash of paint against a sickly moonlit sky. Well, would you look at that? Before I can start flipping the paddle shifters to make my escape, it looks as if someone spotted me. I wheel the Ferrari out to the road and lower the power window, pulling up to my little spectator. He sees the Ferrari aghast at the sight of this rolling piece of artwork, fresh out of an unattended showroom and driven by not a so fresh girl with a really bad complexion. Where is my makeup kit when I need it? I can't expect him not to fixate on me in this beautiful car. It is a Ferrari, after all. You'd have to be a zombie not to notice a zombie. Does that even make sense? I made that one up myself. Remember that I am vampire as well, so that gives me the mental edge. I can see the witness to my misdeed standing on the sidewalk, paralyzed by the sight of us. Red Ferrari and zombie vampire traversing the asphalt in what must be a surreal nightmare for the living. I look at him, a young 20-something, same age bracket as me, actually, and I stop the car. We make eye contact and I snarl at him. You want to go for a ride, Sugar Plum? He stares on with ashen face, a look of horror several shades paler than the faint moonlight. He reminds me of a stunned little insect that flew one too many times into the street lamp. He recovers his bearings and is about to scream when I nail the throttle, then vroom, I'm away in manual mode, shifting the paddles, drowning out his gasps of disbelief. What's he going to say? He saw a zombie girl with a rotted face and milky blue eyes driving a stolen Ferrari. Nah, they'd never believe him. He's not saying anything. Maybe he'll just go home, reevaluate his priorities in life, and sleep it off as a hallucination. Let me say this. If he's not careful, I'll send him to a mausoleum. I wind through the gears toward an open highway, a conspicuous red flash of eye candy wedded to this zombie girl. This car has great visibility front and rear, and the seats are extremely comfortable. I could get used to this Ferrari long term, but I know long term would be quite impossible for such a high profile car. Inconspicuous was never my nature. Tonight the roads are empty at this hour. I check the gas gauge and see the needle slip toward empty. 
if I don't find a station soon, this ride is over, hybrid technology or not. I'm a good distance from home, the crypt where I set up residence. Dwindling fuel could be a problem. Then I see a sign in the distance, my vampire vision aiding me with my night driving. I feel like I'm alive again whenever I'm driving at speed, and even more alive when it's a supercar. I almost feel, dare I say it, human. Okay, no more time to talk. I have to get gas. Later. To be continued.